Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. This weekend marks the 40th anniversary of Abiding Presence as a worshiping community. What a gift we've been given. We're so blessed to be worshiping with you this day. We'd love for you to join us in this celebration. Over the next week, I invite you to take a short video of yourself and email it to the church about what this place of grace means to you. You can find the email addresses in the comments below. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for the worship experience. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, hallelujah. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning. You created us in your image and you planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched. You gave us water to drink from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully, give us faith to trust that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Luke writes, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all of the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. And above every name, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hey kids. There's this story we're about to hear, and it's about Jesus going up into heaven. He's been hanging out with all of his closest friends for 40 days, and he's been teaching them everything that they need to know. And he looks at them and he says, you are going to be witnesses of all these things. And I used to think that meant that they're just going to see what's going to happen. But it's a little bit more than that. He's really telling them, you are going to go show everybody what I've been teaching you. And you're gonna do it in everything that you say and everything that you do. And it's hard for us to do these things, especially right now, to be Christ-like in a world when we're stuck at home or when we're having to do homework on a computer and we can't be with our friends. So I invite you to think about ways that you can witness to all the wonderful things that Christ has done for us by showing other people and telling other people about it I'm sure you can think of a few good ones. I can't wait to see you. We'll talk to you later. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For 40 days, the disciples had enjoyed the presence of Jesus abiding with them after the resurrection. For 40 days, he taught, he enlightened, and he opened their minds to Scripture. For 40 days, he blessed them and breathed on them the Holy Spirit. He explained everything that had been written about him in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, and said that they must be fulfilled. And this is good news to be proclaimed to all nations. And then he says, you are to be witnesses to these things. And he lifts his hands, and he blesses them, and he ascends. You are witnesses to these things. I always thought that what was meant 
by the disciples witnessing was just that they saw all the things that Jesus did. That they were the ones that were with Jesus and we hear about it or we read about it or we talk about it. But that word witness means more than to just see something. In the Greek, it shares the same root with the word martyr. A martyr is somebody who, is suffers or who suffers or is killed for their faith practices by some external source. So think about it this way. A witness or to bear witness to these things is something done regardless of circumstance, difficulty, fear, potential suffering, and yes, even death. So Jesus tells these disciples, you are witnesses of these things. Everything that you say and everything that you do bears witness to what has been fulfilled in Scripture. So proclaim it. Proclaim it everywhere. Proclaim it to everyone, regardless of suffering or difficulty from any external source. And right now, we have an amazing external source, COVID-19. How do we bear witness to these things as we suffer isolation and quarantine, social distancing, fear of getting the virus, fear of death? After 40 days, Jesus ascended, and I'm sure that the disciples felt a lot like we do right now, alone, isolated, in quarantine, wondering what the days ahead are going to look like. Wondering what to do, how to respond, how do we bear witness to these things? Well, I remind you what Pastor Bill said last weekend. You are not alone. It's going to be 10 more days when the disciples will feel the physical presence of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, but even as Jesus ascends, they are not alone. He has breathed on them the Holy Spirit and promised to be with them till the end of age. And the same is true right now as we are dealing with this global pandemic. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are with us and we give you thanks and praise. Let your will be done through us. Give us your voice to bear witness to others in everything that we say. Give us your action to bear witness to others in everything we do. Give us your strength and courage to bear witness to all these things as we discover new ways of being church in the world. Amen. So this weekend we were to celebrate 40 years of ministry at Abiding Presence. We were going to have a golf tournament and raise money for Habitat for Humanity. A full day was going to be dedicated to have service opportunities for the entire community. And then we were going to have a festival worship celebration and a big old congregational meal. Now we are still going to do these things at, at a later date when it's safe for us to gather. But it seems like a lot of people are having to celebrate special occasions like birthdays or anniversaries while in quarantine. And so we're going to have to recognize this milestone in the same way. See, about two years ago, we started talking about celebrating our 40th. We formed committees to, to, uh, or teams to create a sacred and, and, and spiritual celebration of seeking God and serving others. And we came up with the theme, APLC 4.0, which of course gives this nod to our past, but also points us into the future where God is calling us to 4.1 or 4.6 or 5.0. And then we looked at that number 40 in the Bible and how it was this time of transition or, or transformation. And we studied stories like Noah and the ark and the flood, the Israelites in the desert and, and Jesus in the wilderness. Each were walking with God before and after 40 days or 40 years began to walk with God in new ways, transformed by each experience. And then in the 40 days of Lent, transformation happened. Just not the way we expected. COVID-19 changed everything seemingly overnight. This worship space was transformed into a sacred recording studio to prepare worship experiences. And living rooms and bedrooms and dens and patios have been transformed into altars and, and worship spaces. The way we seek God has transformed and we are forever changed. We are bearing witness in new ways despite our current sufferings and difficulties. 
I've witnessed you sharing these worship experiences with others. Some, some of y'all are emailing them to loved ones. Others are sharing online. And I know that there are friends and followers on your media platforms that don't agree with you theologically or, or politically. And you are bearing witness to all these things. I've witnessed you serving as phone caregivers, calling others, touching base, and, and offering prayers. And we've transformed how we connect to each other in new ways. And you are bearing witness to these things. I've witnessed quilters transforming quilt tops into face masks. Over 280 face masks were given to the children's shelter this past week. We've transformed how we're serving others in new ways. You are bearing witness to these things. I witness you making sandwiches and bringing fruit every week for Haven for Hope. What was one thing? A monthly offering of delicious homemade cookies and coffee has turned into and transformed into a weekly meal for those in real need. You are bearing witness to these things. I've witnessed this place of grace open its doors to the blood bank this past week, offering a space for the community to gather safely to donate such a precious and needed resource in this difficult time for those suffering the most. You are, wit are witnesses of these things. This past week, we shared a lot of different videos with you from former pastors and, and, and from our bishop to offer words of congratulations and, and well wishes on 40 years of mission and ministry in San Antonio. Our founding pastor, Bill Brueggemann, shared how we became known as Abiding Presence. And he desired a name for a church that would be here in the future, a name that was a representation of God's love and God's grace. And we are bearing witness to these things. For 40 years, this place of grace has felt the presence of Jesus abiding with us. For 40 years, this community of faith proclaims all are welcome to learn and worship and serve as God in Christ Jesus is made known to all. For 40 years, God has blessed this congregation, breathing the Holy Spirit through each and every one of us. And God has walked with us for 40 years. And we have been transformed. We're entering a new chapter in the ministry together, and God has promised to walk with us as we go ahead. None of us thought we'd be doing this like we are today, online, from home, six feet away, behind face masks, but this has not stopped us from sharing the good news of the resurrection. You are witnesses of these things. We have been transformed, abiding presence. And together, we are seeking God and serving others in new ways. And this, well, this is a cause for celebration. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Worshiping apart, yet bound by love, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. We pray that the church lives out its call to be the body of Christ, that bishops and pastors lead with wisdom, and that all the baptized be witnesses to your mercy and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that wars between nations and violence within neighborhoods cease, that the leaders of nations pour out justice for their people, and that legislators be granted wisdom for their difficult decisions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that those with coronavirus be healed, that those facing death be comforted, and that those returning to society remain healthy, that physicians and nurses be granted endurance, that hospitals be equipped for their work, that researchers discover a vaccine, and that future waves of illness are averted. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that the poor be fed and clothed and housed, that the unemployed find jobs, that those we name before you aloud or in our hearts receive health and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that teachers be preserved in their care for our youth that scientists be supported in their exploration of your creation, and that theologians assist us in receiving the mysteries of the ascension. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that we join with all the saints who have gone before us, especially Marjorie Schick, united forever in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Receive our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, ascended for us, and reigning in your glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Would you please take just a moment to share God's peace with those around you? Text someone through your social media. Your gifts keep this congregation strong and prepared to enter the next chapter of our ministry together as we're celebrating these 40 years of ministry. You are witnesses to these things. Thank you for your continued generosity.
Let us pray. Holy and generous host, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life as we use each blessing for service in your name and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us give thanksgiving for the word. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.